Hello everyone! Today we're going to come up with making a very unconventional clasp using silver silk. This is probably one of my favorite projects, and it's so easy to put together. If you're new to my channel, my name is Neelay Patel. I'm the owner, designer, and educator here at Silver Silk & More, bringing you guys fun, inspirational, just out-of-the-world idea projects using silver silk. So, you can find the materials list in the video description and you can also check me out in a couple places. First is YouTube. You can hop on over to youtube.com and uh, search for Silver Silk and more. Please give my channel a big thumbs up and subscribe. The other place is my Instagram. So you can follow me there and I've got a ton of tutorial project photos, uh, reels, just very interesting content using Silver Silk and just a great place to find inspiration. So I want to get right into this project. So I'm going to flip over to the finished photo and onto my workboard and describe what it is that you're looking at. Here is the finished design. And I say unconventional clasp, and this is truly unconventional, <laughs> but in the most fun and interesting way, because that just unclasps and it's so easy to put together. And it doesn't take very many materials either to put together. So one of my favorite things so far that I've come up with. And so let me give you the materials description here. So I have got some leather cord. This is three millimeter leather, which is perfect for my end caps and um, will fit into those single strand end caps just wonderfully. It's about the size of a typical chain that you would find at Silver Silk, one of the capture or pearlesque chains. So if you're concerned about using the findings for other stuff, don't worry, you absolutely can. Okay, I have got um, some of my pearlesque chain here. This is the hematite pearlesque chain. It's solid hematite, which the pearlesque part comes into a rainbow tinsel that's knitted over the ball chain. So let me describe the entire process, actually. You have a ball chain core, um, similar to a fan pulley, and then knitted over that is a rainbow tinsel that creates this really iridescent sparkle over the ball chain. And then knitted over both of those things is wire, um, very thin 34 gauge wire, and you get this really intricate, supple, and flexible chain that is just so much fun to work with. And it's going to create this perfect palette too. And I also must add that I came up with this extra side project um, palette for probably for me, actually. <laughs> I had this bracelet already made, but I kind of wanted to make something for myself using the same technique, just because it's so cool. Um, and I just, I don't need very much pearlesque chain, actually. I just have a little snippet here. Um, but really, we're just using probably a couple inches at the most. Great for those scrap bags. I have got a couple of double strand end caps. This is going to create my clasp um, toggle, if you will, my, my pocket that the button can go into. And I need a pair of single strand end caps, so I'm just going to grab some off the wall here. Woo, there we go. And I have got a pair of single strand end caps that uh, I will be working with. So there we go. Perfect. And my double strand end caps and single strand end caps kind of work the same way. There's a channel for you to put your chain, whether it is the leather cord or if it is the pearlesque or capture chain. And um, the idea here is you just crimp it shut. There are little teeth inside of this particular type of end cap on both the single and double end caps here. And those teeth grasp onto the chain, the ball chain core specifically, so that you don't need any other special glue or tools to be able to crimp this with. Um, you simply just need a pair of wide nose pliers that I'll show you in, in just a second. Um, so have that on hand. And then I've got three of these six millimeter jump rings. I've got a little bead here that I'm gonna use as my accent. Um, it's not required for this piece. I just thought it gave, gives a nice little pop of color or something extra to your design. And um, I've got a few charms and a little button. So 
This uh, is really cool. I, I just fell in love with this button the moment I saw it and I wanted to wear it somehow. So <laughs> hence me making this tutorial of design for myself. So um, it's got a little B on it. And um, it, again, it's just a standard button. You could use a bead for this type of project too. I just feel like a button in this case is much easier to all, you know, attach everything together. So um, I have that. And then I just have a couple little charms, which you can substitute the charms out for beads instead, which would work just as well. Okay. And the last thing I do, do need is some wire. So let me grab some black wire here and cut a little snippet of it. This is just for my um, little attachment here, my little bead. So I'm just gonna have a little, um, about a two and a half inch length of 20 gauge craft wire. So this is all the materials you need to construct this design. I'll still have this over off here at the side just so you can see what's going on. But for the most part, these are all my materials and I'm so excited to construct all of this together. So let's start with our bracelet band. I'm just gonna grab my leather cord and I'm going to measure it around my wrist to see how much I actually need. Now this is the full length. This is all the way around. And now if we're thinking about our clasp addition, we are looking at adding about an inch and a half of extra space there. So I don't like my bracelets to be too big. So I wanna actually make sure I cut off enough to compensate for that. And um, if my bracelet ends up being too short, then hey, I could just add on more beads, even better, right? <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut it about right there. And again, this is just enough to get me to um, that mark where then I can add on an inch and a half and it'll be the perfect length. And I tend to just eyeball some of these things um, in, in this case, because everyone's got a different size wrist that they prefer, or if they want a more loose bracelet, then um, certainly that that's you know achievable. So I am going to just open up my end cap using a pair of really thin chain nose pliers. And this will just help to kind of squeeze in as much of that cord as I possibly can right into the finding. And then I had mentioned, I was gonna show you my wide nose pliers. These have been dipped in a product called Tool Magic, which looks like this. So if you want, you can absolutely just pause it at this stage of the video and go and search for that product. Um, but I recommend having it and coating your wide nose pliers with it. It's going to keep your findings from any sort of marring or abrasion or nicks that might happen in the crimping process in which you just really just smash it with your <laughs> pliers here right over the uh, leather cord and it's nice and secure. And I'm gonna do that to the other side here while we're in this first stage. So I just put my nose of my end no of my chain nose pliers into the cap. And then I just kind of press out a little bit to give myself an extra millimeter or two of space there. Okay, simply just press it right in. Those teeth grasp onto the surface of that leather cord and it really just makes a nice crimp. Okay, that's perfect. There we go. So we've got our bracelet band practically finished. So now what we have to do is create our little um, catch component there. So I'm gonna use a measurement of this. Now, one thing to keep in mind is part of your chain goes into the end cap. So we have to account for that measurement as we're making this. My button isn't very big. Um, and in fact, I bet I could get even this button to go through this which is perfect. So I'm just gonna use the measurement length of this as my base here. And this is probably about an inch and a half of extra, well, I'm not extra, I'm sorry, um, an inch and a half of my pearlesque chain. So I'm gonna cut two of those. There's one. And there's two. And as you can see, I've got a ton more left over for many other projects. Or if I wanted to make a lot of these bracelets, I absolutely could. 
So same process here. I'm just going to open up my end. Well, I might not even need to because these are pretty wide open. I'm just going to go ahead and stuff in my chain here. And if your cap isn't opened up wide enough, then I would recommend doing it because it is so much easier to insert and to keep that chain kind of in place there. And if it feels like it's not going in enough, then by all means, go ahead and do it. There we go. You'd be surprised at how much a millimeter or two makes such a big difference in the crimping. Hey, that looks really good. I'm going to keep this positioned as such. What's also nice about that tool magic is it's got that rubberized coating. So it's going to grip your finding really well and you can use it to kind of hold everything in place as you're crimping it so that nothing really slips or slides out. So um, once you have done that and it's crimped, just give it a little tug, make sure that nothing's gonna come out. If your wires are uneven at this point, go ahead and cut them flush to each other. There might be a few little scrap wire shards that come out. I call these wire fuzzies. And you just kind of want to pluck them if they're really annoying and in the way, um, especially while you're crimping because you don't want those to get in the way. Okay, and then I want to make sure a couple things here. First is opening up that end cap uh, yet again. So we'll just open it up a couple millimeters here. And then um, finally, making sure that my logo side faces the same direction. Because if one is this way and one is the other, I feel like that's an unintentional, it almost kind of looks like a mistake. So I want to make sure that I don't do that. Okay, once that's positioned in place, then you can crimp and pull if you need to, just to make sure that it's positioned all nice and well there. And that looks really good. Lastly, I'm just going to make sure that my button kind of fits up through it pretty smoothly there. That looks really, that looks really good. Ugh, I can't wait to wear this. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Okay, so at this point, I kind of just have to connect stuff together, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create my simple loops here on this side. So I'm going to grab it into my pliers, work it around the nose to get myself a one-sided loop. Then I'll just grab my chain nose pliers and twist back to get that loop nice and centered as such. Slide on my bead and do the same thing to the other side, but I'm gonna trim it a half inch just above the bead. And again, if you feel like you've made your bracelet length too short on the band, you can add a couple more beads in the same chain format that I'm making here and it'll help to kind of compensate for that space that you accidentally cut away. So let's see. One thing I wanna know is if, it looks like my loops are facing the same direction here for my chain, for my bracelet to work um, and lay flat. So I'm gonna make sure that I go ahead and do that to my example piece here. And then now I'll just start to kind of attach everything together. So I'm gonna switch some pliers around here. Toggle up, attach and then press back down. Um, it looks like my bracelet is attached or my, my button pocket is attached to this. Oops. Perfect. And then it looks like my button is attached. So at this point, it's just a matter of attaching all the right parts and pieces together. Okay, so I'm gonna just use some jump rings to attach all of this beauty together. One thing I wanna go ahead and do is at this point, I can kind of see if, um, if this is gonna work on my wrist. Ooh, I like that. It's just a little loose, but that's okay. I kind of I kind of dig how it's just very casual looking. So now I just have to attach my um, little charms to this side. It just makes a really unconventional clasp. Loving the way this looks. 
And it's so easy to put on and take off too compared to some other class <laughs> that might be out there in the market. Okay, so at this point you can absolutely just connect everything together. Now I kind of want my bee and my honeycomb to lay on top of each other. So I might not need all three jump rings to accomplish this. I could probably just have the two um, and take this other jump ring out of the equation. And let's see if I'm logo side up, I kind of want it to lay this direction. Just uh, double check the way that it lays and the way that your jump rings and everything works because you want it to be facing the same direction all the way around your design. So here we go. I should have, I guess I could have put it on afterwards too, but just to measure everything and make sure it all works. There we go. That's it. Very cool. I love this design so much. So I'm going to flip it back around to my example photo. And if you do make a bunch of these, they would just make great sack bracelets, I think. Um, and just add that nice little jingle magic. So here we go. Let's flash that photo. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did teaching it to you. One of my favorite things to do is to really think outside the box and seeing how silver silk can help improve um, not only just a jewelry making process, but some of the components that go into jewelry making. So this class makes clasping your design much easy, um, which I love. And it also just adds a nice visual interest. So I really hope you'll give this a try on your uh, with your design. And um, again, you can check out a couple places that I'm at, which is my YouTube channel. And I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And um, there's also a giant library of so many video tutorials that you can really be inspired by. If you're looking for more inspiration, you can check out my Instagram. Um, follow me there. I've got a ton of video reels, um, pictures, and they all coordinate with my tutorials. So it's a great place to find quick inspiration. And then lastly, my Silky's Facebook group. Um, we're over 2,000 members now, which is crazy, but we're a fantastic growing community of silver silk enthusiasts and creators and just inspiring each other and inspiring the world to stay creative. So we hope that you'll come join us there. And lastly, you can check out the video description for not only the materials, but other ways to communicate with Silver Silk, including text message notifications. So I leave you guys um, hopefully inspired, creative, and energized, and I will see you again at the next tutorial. <laughs>